the single through line of art history that was sort of supported by art writers, critics, and curators has, uh, art history has splintered. And that's, that is reflected in my own art in that my signature style has splintered. My work started with representational work, landscape-based, connected to nature in one way or another. Gradually that work over the decades morphed into geometric abstraction. But in the last decade, I've returned to representational work and with a certain kind of political content as well, reflecting the housing crisis, homelessness in general, improvised architecture. And even in my abstract phase, some of my work had oblique references to content other than pure formal abstraction. Uh, during the AIDS era, for example, in San Francisco, uh, my pictures were elegiac. They were collaged, geometric abstraction, but in some cases they included elements of collage as if in a votive offering in a temple in Thailand. For example, squares of gold leaf stuck to the temple walls as a wish and a prayer. Beyond that, my abstraction and beyond the AIDS era, it began to mine sources like mid-century modern design elements and tribal elements, where those two things merge, tribal design elements. Most of nature is systematized in one way or another by different societies, whether it's in pottery or weaving or painting. And then eventually uh, I got into uh, doing some large-scale watercolors in this last decade based on the work of John James Audubon, but expanding it with environmental concerns and sort of backstories of species. And that led pretty naturally to broader landscapes um, and some of the architectural work. I think I'm going to continue to go back and forth between abstraction and representational work and work right on the edge of those two things because my representational work actually has a lot of ingredients that are found in my abstract paintings. And the landscape around Hunter's Point Shipyard is also that in a way. It is a hybrid between nature and man-made, in other words, between the naturalistic and the geometric. And uh, when you look out in the surroundings on the waterfront, the former industrial waterfront of San Francisco, you see shipping containers and warehouses and cargo sheds and dry docks and things that are all man-made, but they are elements of a landscape and they in fact dominate the landscape. They also have an environmental uh, component, a, a sort of a commentary on degradation and fragmentation. The actual landscape in which we now live is not necessarily scenic in a conventional sense or pretty in a conventional sense. We now live in a man-made world to a large extent, at least in these urban and semi-urban areas. So that becomes the subject. For me, art operates not just intellectually, that's one aspect of it, but it also interacts with the body. It's also a, uh, it's, so it's sensual. Art does, uh, in some kind of mysterious way, embody some of those natural principles. And I think the closest we can get to that, other than physical stuff like sex, is art. <laughs>